Yeah, mm. I was there. Uh, I was waiting for each one of us to settle down. And then we can start our service this morning. Karibuni sana. Karibuni sana each one of us in the presence of the Lord. And whatever your version, we are going to read it all aloud as a congregation. Yeah, I think we are all there, at least the majority of us. So let's read Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever. And his faithfulness to all generations. His faithfulness to all generations. Can we just take a minute or two before the Lord? Just talk to him, tell him something. Ambia to buwana kitu. Tunapokuwa mbele yake kwa muda. Father, we want to thank you this morning that we are able to come as a congregation to worship you. We know that there are so many other people who are in so many different places. But for us this morning, we've chosen to come before your throne of grace, before your feet of mercy, that we may get mercy and we may praise you and we may worship you. We know that this morning you speak to us. And Lord God, whatever that's going to take place the whole of this day in your, in your honor, may it glorify your name, O oh God. We thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So this time I'll ask us to sing one hymn, the worship team. And lead us into one.
Judges 10, 17 to 11, verse 22. Judges 10, 17 to 11, verse 22. When the Ammonites were called to arms and camped in Gilead, the Israelites assembled and camped at Mizpah. The leaders of the people of Gilead said to each other, whoever will launch the attack against the Ammonites will be the head of all those living in Gilead. Jephthah, the Gileadite, was a mighty warrior. His father was Gilead, his mother was a prostitute. Gilead's wife also bore him sons. And when they were grown up, they drove Jephthah away. You are not going to get any inheritance in our family, they said, because you are the son of another woman. So Jephthah fled from his brothers and settled in the land of Tob, where a group of adventurers gathered around him and followed him. Some time later, when the Ammonites made war on Israel, the elders of Gilead went to get Jephthah from the land of Tob. Come, they said, be our commander so we can fight the Ammonites. Jephthah said to them, didn't you hate me and drive me from my father's house? Why do you come to me now when you're in trouble? The elders of Gilead said to him, Nevertheless, we are turning to you now. Come with us to fight the Ammonites, and you will be our head over all who live in Gilead. Jephthah answered, Suppose you take me back to fight the Ammonites, and the Lord gives them to me. Will I really be your head? The elders of Gilead replied, The Lord is our witness. We will certainly do as you say. So Jephthah went with the elders of Gilead, and the people made him head and commander over them and he repeated all his words before the Lord in Mizpah. Then Jephthah sent messengers to the Ammonite king with the question, What do you have against us that you have attacked our country? The king of the Ammonites answered Jephthah's messengers, When Israel came up out of Egypt, they took away my land from the Arnon to the Jabok, all the way to the Jordan. Now give it back peaceably. Jephthah sent back messengers to the Ammonite king, saying, this is what Jephthah says. Israel did not take the land of Moab or the land of the Ammonites. But when they came up out of Egypt, Israel went through the desert to the Red Sea and on to Kadesh. Then Israel sent messengers to the king of Edom saying, Give us permission to go through your country. But the king of Edom would not listen. They sent also to the king of Moab and he refused. So Israel stayed at Kadesh. Next, they traveled through the desert, scattered the lands of Edom and Moab, passed along the eastern side of the country of Moab, and camped on the other side of the Arnon. They did not enter the territory of Moab, for the Arnon was its border. Then Israel sent messengers to Sihon, king of the Amorites, who ruled in Heshbon, and said to him, let us pass through your country to our own place. Sihon, however, did not trust Israel to pass through his territory. He mustered all his men and encamped at Jahaz and fought with Israel. Then the Lord, the God of Israel, gave Sihon and all his men into Israel's hands, and they defeated them. Israel took over all the land of the Amorites who lived in that country capturing all of it from the Arnon to the Jabok and from the desert to the Jordan. That is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Dr. Masi. We thank the Lord for that. We have some few items that we want to pray over. Um, so let's just pray. Let's, let's bow and pray. Maybe you have issues, you can just raise your hand. I know the Lord will see them as we pray together. Kama unahitaji utainua mikono yako na Bwana anayajua ataitatua pamoja tukiomba. Father in the name of Jesus we come before you this morning. We have some needs and also we have some praises that you've done to us. And Lord God we will first want to begin with our government that we always pray for that Father Lord God will continue giving them wisdom, will continue guiding them 
You'll continue helping them, Lord, even as they lead us as a nation. Father, too, we want to pray for this church, Lord, our pastor and the whole family. Father, Lord God, as members, we also come before you, King of Glory, that will enable us, will strengthen us. And Lord God, that will continue bringing us up and especially um, making us mature in the spiritual aspects of our lives, O oh, King of Glory. Lord God, there are those of us who have some various needs, you know them. How we pray this morning that we'll meet each one of us according to our various uh, needs, O oh, King of Glory. We also have some thanksgiving. Lord, some of us here have got some things that were done to us. We also want to thank you. We want to ask you that we may receive all the glory and you may receive all the, all the honor. And Father Lord, if there's anyone who's sick among us, Lord God, may you extend your hand of healing upon he or her, that Lord God, by the end of the day, she will say, yes, Lord, you've healed me. And King of Glory, we want to thank you for those of us who are traveling. Some of us are not with us here. Lord God, may you give them journey mercies. Even they are going out and they are coming in. We thank you and we bless you. We know we have so many other prayer requests, prayer needs. Lord God, we commit all those prayer needs before your hands. Lord God, may you meet us at the point of our needs, O oh God. We thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, just a few notices. Today is the baptism day. Leo ni siku ya kubatizwa, ya kubatisa wewe. So we, I'm so happy that my daughter is among them. <laughs> May the Lord bless you. And uh, I just said that I better get this. Yeah, I think we, I thank the Lord for my deacon and my pastor. We jumped. We should be getting to worship first. Choral worship. Thank you. And then we'll pray, we'll give the notices. I was so excited about the baptism, so I actually jumped the choral worship. You see, it's exact, exciting to see my daughter. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I invite us to stand up as we welcome one another and you greet the person like you've not seen them for a very, very long time. Ule mse ujai muwana kwa mdamre. Una msalimia hivo? Si una fao msalimia na furaha, ume smile, hata uneza mhag, uki smile, uki cheka, labda uneza msalimia kwa lugu yako, ya kimombo. Na hakuna mtu salimia mse wa drums, mtu wa salimia mse wa drums, na mtu wa keyboard pia salimi wangu hii. Na jama wa kamera hapa nyuma pia na fa salimi. Ah madam wa kamera, tumpigie madam wa kamera makofi leo. Namshukuru Mwenyezi Mungu kwa maana ametupa mtu wa kamera. Tunamfurahia leo. Tunasema yeye ni mtakatifu. Na ukisema bwana ni mtakatifu inafaa. Furahie, upige makofi, tigiza kidogo. Come on. Come on. Everybody gonna say mtakatifu ni wewe. Come on. Mtakatifu ni wewe. Mwaminifu, mwaminifu ni wewe. Tena mwema se. Mwema ni wewe. Hakuna mwingine kama wewe. I can't hear you say mtakatifu. Mtakatifu ni wewe. Mwaminifu, mwaminifu ni wewe. Oh, tena wema Wema ni wewe Hey, hakuna Mingine kama wewe I wanna hear your voices Say mtakatifu Mtakatifu ni wewe Mwaminifu Mwaminifu ni wewe Tena wema Wema ni wewe Hakuna Mingine kama wewe Come on, say, utukufu wa kuzingira. Come on. Utukufu wa kuzingira. Malaika. Malaika wa abudu. Wa sujudu, say. Wa sujudu mbele zako. Kisema kwa mba wewe. Wewe diwe mungu. We're gonna say, utukufu. Utukufu wa kuzingira. Malaika. Malaika wa abudu. 
wasu juru wasu juru mbele zako sema kwamba wewe wewe ndiwe Mungu ifje wose mtakatifu mtakatifu ni wewe oh mwaminifu mwaminifu ni wewe tena wema wema ni wewe hakuna mwingine kama wewe sema mtakatifu mtakatifu ni wewe hey mwaminifu mwaminifu ni wewe tena wema wema ni wewe hakuna mwingine kama wewe uwepo wako na furaha uwepo wako na furaha na suju na suju mbele zako sema kwamba wewe wewe ndiwe Mungu uwepo wako uwepo wako na furaha wimbo zenge na suju na suju mbele zako sema kwamba wewe wewe ndiwe Mungu ima mtakati Hakuna mwingine kama wewe mtakatifu mtakatifu ni wewe oh mwaminifu mwaminifu Yehoshua masia wema ni wewe hakuna leko to the bridge kama wewe umestahili kama use umestahili wewe bwana Kupokea utukufu heshima na uweza milele na milele We gonna do it once more Say una so mstahili wewe Bwana Mungu wetu Kupokea utukufu heshima na uweza milele na milele Let's try it once more Umesahili ewe Bwana Mungu wetu Kupokea utukufu heshima na uweza milele na milele Mtakatifu ni wewe Oh mwaminifu mwaminifu ni wewe Takatifu mara kwanza oh 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 yeah mwaminifu ni wewe tena mwema mwema ni wewe hakuna mwingine kama wewe oh mtakatifu mtakatifu ni wewe eh mwaminifu mwaminifu eh tena mwema Yes, he is. Come on. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. 
Lord. Yeah. I want to hear your voices. Say, oh, give thanks unto the Lord. For he is good. Yeah. Once more, say, oh, give thanks. Oh, yeah. 
lust for your righteousness. So we come to you to worship, to praise you. Indeed, you are God, you're great, you're kind, your love has never failed us so long. Every single day.
God, sometimes when we sit down and ask ourselves how many times we've wronged you, Lord, we are not sometimes worthy of standing before you. But Father God, thank you for your greatness. Thank you, Father God, for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your love, Lord. Father, you've shown us a lot. You've shown us how far you can go, Father God, for us. Father God, we thank you for the sun that you gave, oh Lord God, so that we can breathe again, so that we can maybe, so that we can become free, so that we can breathe again, so that we can rejoice again in your name, Lord. Father God, we are so grateful. We are so grateful, Lord. We are so grateful, Father God, for the gifts that you've given unto us. Father God, most of us, we don't deserve to live, Lord. But Father God, you just decided to show again your kindness and your love to us. And that's why we are here today.
And, and, and just just burn everything. But Lord God, because of your great mercy, your great love, Lord, you just saw Christ coming to save us again. Father God, those nails were made for me. But Father God, Jesus Christ decided to take them from me. The thorny crown that was put on him, oh Lord God, they were made for me, for us. But Father God, you decided that he died so that we can be free. Indeed, your love is great. And that's what Father God makes us realize every single day that there is a huge difference between us and you. Indeed, you are God. Thank you. We say thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day that you've made again unto our sight so that we can see again your greatness into our fellows who's going to receive you again today. We thank you for every say, everything, Lord. Say Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna to the Lamb that was slain. Hosanna, Hosanna, Jesus died. Say Hosanna.
glory be unto your name yesterday, today, and forevermore. We praise you in Jesus' name. Hosanna, Hosanna to the Lamb. Jesus died and rose again. Let me just take a minute to think about it. Just take a minute and just think about it. He died and rose again. But even as Rogers have been praying, we're still united in the same prayers. And we thank you that you died. You are the Lamb of God who was slain. You died and rose again. And today we are free. We thank you for this. In Jesus' name we pray. Just one more notice, apart from baptism that we have, we'll be having today. We are having a topic on the seventh of this month. Next month, sorry, next month of May. Tutakuwa na mkutano tarehe saba mwezi watano, and it will be about parenting, being a parent. Na fikiri kiswahili na mambo mengi ina uzito zaidi na sema tutakuwa na mjadala ya uzazi ama kuwa mzazi ama vile uzazi uendelea so if you have your neighbors your friends who are parents probably you are maybe struggling with being a parent so many of us are struggling with that we have so many questions so I want to invite you on the 7th of may come yourself and invite other neighbors karibisha majirani zako marafiki zako wakuje wapate majibu yote kuhusu kukuwa mzazi who is a parent na mzazi ni mtu aina gani na anaishi namna gani na anakaa kivipi so i invite you all of us next month don't miss um, you'll get more on it as time goes by um, this time maybe one of us or two of because of our time you have a testimony kuna kitu mungu amefanyia hata kushuhudia hivi this is your time tunaimpa na ushuhuda Okay, I think. Oh, okay, yes, Sylvester. Amen. Okay. Yeah. Amen. Yes, but Thank God for the life that he's given us. It's not for granted. Um, any other person? One more brief? Okay. Thank you, Sylvester. Thank you for all of you. Uh, this time, do we have visitors? Tuko na wageni. Ni mara yako ya kwanza kukua kwa kanisa hili. Mara yako ya kwanza kuwa na sisi kwa ukumbi huu. Kuna ya mtu ambaye ni mgeni? Do we have any visitor with us? It's your first time to be with us. Okay. Yes. Tell us. Your name, maybe, from where you are. Amen. Okay. Yeah, Kevin, karibu sana. Karibu. Okay. Asante sana. At uh, this time, I think we are okay. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, please. All the time. God is good, and that's his nature. Fiona. Okay, karibu sana Fiona. Yeah, welcome again and again. Karibu ni sana. Amen. Oh, Mama Adam. Okay. Yeah, karibu tena, karibu tena. Karibu. Yeah, we welcome each one of us. I hope hakuna mwingine amebaki nje. 
Okay, so this time we want to have a hymn, and then we'll uh, dismiss our Sunday school children. So before that, let's just pray for our Sunday school children because uh, they will be moving out immediately after the, the hymn. Tunawambe watoto ambao watakuwa nenda Sunday school wakati huu. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you for our children. We want to thank you for these young people. And Lord God, they are upcoming your ministers. May they go, as they go to their classes, as they go to learn what you have planned for them today, may you give them a good time, may you bless them, be with them and be their teachers. We thank you and bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So give us one hymn and then the man of God will come with the word. Invite us to stand as we sing, when peace like a river attendeth my way. When sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, you have taught me to say it is well. It is well. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when so.
indeed it is well with my soul because he is God and he's worthy and he's able to deal with all matters pertaining to my heart, my soul, my whole being, that it is well with my soul all the time and always is what God grants to us in Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Would like us to take time now to look at the word that's for us today. We're going back to Second Peter. We have been studying Second Peter, and today we are on chapter two of Second Peter. We like to break the word of God uh, expositorily, continuously, so that we don't skip any verse. Uh, we can be able to learn a lot from that. So today we look at um, chapter two. Let me read for us just the first two verses. But there were also false prophets among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you. They will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the sovereign Lord who bought them, bringing swift destruction on themselves. Many will follow their shameful ways and will bring the way of truth into disrepute. <laughs> Father, we thank you for this morning and for this word you have given us today. We pray that you will guide us and instruct us in this word today, Lord, because you are a great teacher, God, our Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. We are living in days when a lot of things are happening. But just at the time when Jesus Christ had come on earth and he had died and he had resurrected and he had ascended to heaven, there were people who had a lot of difficulty. They had trouble with what just happened? What, just, what have we seen? What have we heard? And therefore, they struggled with certain things. For example, there are people who are called the Ebionites. Ebionites, just after Christ had died and resurrected. This group of people, they were Jews, but they had become Christians. They were Jews. You know, Jews have trouble with Jesus Christ. Many of them say, no, the Messiah has not come. He, some say, okay, he has come. A few of them do so. So there were those who were what we call Judaizing Christians, they were Jews, one of Israeli, and they were so Christian, they had turned to Christ. Now for them, they taught that Christ was chosen by God to be a Messiah, not from birth, that he was not a Messiah from birth, but that he became a Messiah during baptism, wakati alibatizwa, that happened to Mungu alimchagua Yesu. It's not possible. So they say that because Jesus had obeyed the law, Ameti, Sharia, na Amri Sana, Mpaka Munga, Kapedeso Naye, Alafu, Akamuchagua, Akwe Mesa. That because he had obeyed the law, because he had been able to fulfill that law, and uh, that uh, he did not, he, he was not, apart from that, that's the day that he was baptized, that's when the Holy Spirit came upon him. They did not agree that he was born through a virgin. They did not believe that he was God. Walikata, huyo siyo mungu, huyo haku zaliwa na bikira. Haiwezekani. Kwa sababu, haiwezekani kuwa kristo. Kwa sababu, waliamini ya kwamba, there is what we call monotheism, that there is only how many gods? One God, one God, the Jews say so. But now it was disturbing them to see how can God be man? How can God be also God? Because they struggled with that and therefore they said it's not possible. Jesus Christ was chosen to be a Messiah only at baptism. He was not born a Messiah. So you can see that this was a challenge. It was a trouble for them. It disturbed them. And I know that many things are also disturbing us today. How do we understand Christ? How do we understand Christ? 
Another group of people, just around the same time, the same period after Christ had resurrected, they were called Gnostics. Gnostics. These were people who were Gentiles. They had believed in Jesus Christ, but they were saying, since flesh is evil, God could not become flesh. They therefore denied, they refused. They said, incarnation, incarnation, kuzaliwa kwa Yesu Kristo, mungu kama mutu, incarnation, ile kuzaliwa yake ile. Kwa mba awezekani, awezekani, munga awezi kuzaliwa na mna hiyo. Waka kata pia haya mambo, Kristo awezi kuwa mezaliwa, awezi kuwa na mwile ambao kama ni wetu. And therefore, what they said was that the divine Christ came upon the human Christ at his baptism. They said, Yepia alpata kuwa mkristo, alpata kuitwa Yesu Kristo, wakati tuwa, wakubatizwa. And they said, therefore, the spirit who was now in Christ departed from Christ just before crucifixion. Ya kwamba kabla Yesu asulubishwe, Yule roho haka toka, haka mwacha yesi tena. Kwa, kwa sababu sasa hii mwili, hii mwili ambayo likuwa nayo, hawezekani kuwa yeye ni kristo. So mambo haya ya kawa yanasumbua watu kwa muda mrefu. It, this, this, was a, this was trouble for many people for a while until, of course, the Nicene Creed. There was a time when many Christians came together to discuss and they resolved that that kind of thinking is wrong. And that matter was, was closed. But of course, it is still, many people are still struggling with it today in different forms. Because we see, for example, in our country, Kenya, we have a few people who are also saying certain things that are not very exciting, isn't it? Do you know Jehovah Wanyonyi? Jesu Christo Watongareni. Have you heard of uh, the great man, the great Tongareni, Jesus Christ? The other day, I think some people were trying to go and sulubisha ya kasama, ah, nisijaribu kunisulubisha. Mimi, eh, mimi siwa nani? Siwa kusipi kabisa. And he has followers. Na kuna watu, wanamfata, ana wafuasi pale. Nyumba yake tulionyeshwa, tukawana watu. So these things are still there today, even in, in, in more serious ways. We even see another one in coast. Kenya is very rich in people like this one. We, we also have one in coast. In cost called who? Paul Mackenzie. Paul Mackenzie's doctrine or teaching is that wewe huwezi kumuona Yesu mpaka ufunge usikule chochote ujitairisha ukufe kama umefunga. Ndiyo sasa utakuwa tayari kumuona nani? Uku, ufunge. Don't eat anything. And you saw that there were very many graves that, are, that were uprooted in Malindi. People get caught up. Watu huongozwa na kufata mambo ambayo hayambatani na mungu na neno lake. But these are people and they still end up having followers which is sad. We need to know what is true so that you can be able to judge everything, isn't it? Isn't it? Because, you, because it's very easy for you to say, if, if you want to get certain things from people, you may begin to follow someone. Fulane inanakana na njia ya njia mzuri. His way seem to be, it will prosper, for example. Nikienda kwa mutu, nitabarikiwa sana, nita rivi vitu mingi. And people today, they, they, they also can get, get, get into that trouble. So let us look at just quickly three things here for us for this day. The first one from this passage is that false prophets have always been around. Kwamba hawa watu wameko wako. Si wageni kwa hivyo usishtuke useme eh jambo geni limetokea. Secondly, false teachers deny Christ. You can see some of these teachings seem to be denying Christ. Hawa mkubali Yesu Kristo, they deny him. And thirdly, false teachers blaspheme. They teach things which are not true. Wana, wana obiri mamba mbawe siwa kweli. Lakini, wana ifiche wanekana kama ni kwe, ni kweli. You need, you need to be able to design so that you find out is everything that is being said, is it really true? But there were also false prophets among the people, just there, as there will be 
false teachers among you. So, so the apostle, God is telling us, this is a common practice. It's been there. Kulikuwa na wale ambao hawaku wamini Christo. They never believed in Christ. And they were there all those days. They tried to lead people astray. And even today we're seeing, as I've just given you a few examples, people are trying to lead people away from Christ. It is said that these people, they will come into the churches. They will appear to be having a church. So they will come into the body of Christ. They will come into the church. But they come in secret. After having come in secret, they say we are, we are real Christians. Then you begin to see the wrong things. They claim that they, some of them can even claim to be Christ, like we see uh, our friend in, 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 in Tongareni. Let, let's look at Matthew 24. Matthew 24, verse 4 to 5. Matthew 24, verse 4 to 5, says this. As Jesus was sitting on Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. Tell us, they said, when will this happen? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Of course, we could start from verse 1. Jesus left the temple and was walking away when his disciples came to him to call his attention to its buildings. Do you see all these things? He said, he asked them, I tell you the truth, not one stone here will be left on another. Everyone will be thrown down. As Jesus was sitting on Mount Zion, Mount Olives, disciples came to him privately and asked, tell us when, will, when they said, when will this happen? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the ages? Jesus answered them, watch out that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, claiming I am the Christ, and will deceive many. Watch out. Many will come in my name. They will come saying I am the Christ. Some will come doing things that, that I've been doing myself. You will see all these things happening, and they, they will want to, to mislead you. But the point is that what? Watch out. Be careful. We say that Many of them may take on the name of the Lord and put onto themselves. They may say, we are Christ. They do this by using the name of the Lord in vain. When I said to me, in vain. They claim to do exactly what Christ did. They may pretend to do things which Christ did so as to try and convince you. They could do miracles, even fake ones. I'm sure that you have heard, you have heard about fake miracles, isn't it? There's one that I know. Um, on Mombasa Road, the one whose mouth, the one, the lady whose mouth was, I don't know if you remember, Mdome Likwe and Mafanya Ivi, Alaba Kaombewa Sana, Mdome Karu, Ikarudi. But later on, later on, she, she, she began to complain. Where is my money? Wapi pesa yangu? Where is my money? So that was a business. But in whose name? In the name of the Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, you're calling people, and then you, you get into that kind of business and pretend. God saves people. God does miracles. But you don't have to pretend. Amen? You don't have to pretend like, like, like that, 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 that particular uh, church, or the church, so to speak. Because I say, here is the center of what? Miracles. Here is, a, here is where God is working. What's the purpose? So that there may be people who are running there to witness the miracles and say, okay, this is the place where God is. But what if it is like this now? If this is what's happening, how now can God be there, isn't it? How now can God be there if, if things are fake? You need to be careful because such things are happening. We know that Christ will come back in a powerful way. Christ, we say in verse, the same, the same book, chapter 24 of Matthew 26 to 27. Matthew 24, 26, 27 says the following. Let me read for us. So, if anyone tells you there he is out in the desert, do not go out. Or here he is in the inner rooms, do not believe it. For as lightning that comes from the east is visible even in the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. Amen? 
Christ will not come in secret, coming through people, saying, here is the Christ, like now Jehovah here. He will not come in secret. Yes, Akikuja, he will be seen everywhere. Amen. He's saying here, just like, this, like, just like a star is shining. A star doesn't choose where to shine. When it shines, it shines everywhere. Everybody can see it. Amen. Christ is coming. He will come, and he'll come in a powerful way. We must wait for him to come at his time, not in the time that people seem to be designing for God. Because God has said that he's coming, he will come like a thief. He will come, he will come, but in a powerful way. Not a way that, that, that's being presented by people here. Some of them are even predicting a death. You know, you are aware that some people say the end of the earth is coming. Have you, have you heard of those, those ones before? They even give you a debt. When that debt arrives, they say, okay, we made a mistake. It will calculate the buyer. Then you revise the debt again. And then finally you say, okay, um, you know, let, let's leave this matter. How did you begin to calculate the date of arrival of Christ? Some even say that we are using the Bible to to me find yourself hapa. Kwanzia siku ya mwanzo mpaka leo siku hii ndio siku ya Yesu kurudi. And you're saying you're using the Bible. How are you looking at those verses that speak about, like it's saying here, Jesus himself is saying, ye mwenye anasema, atakuja, nagikuja, kutajulikana. The Bible says what? When he's, when, he's come, when he's coming, there will be a trumpet call. Amen. There will be a noise. Hallelujah. Trumpet call, coming, lightning, thunder, earthquake. There will be trouble everywhere when Christ comes. He's the Lord of Lords. When he comes, he's, he's not coming in weakness again. He's going to come in power and glory and majesty. He's going to arrive with, with a thunderous arrival. Everybody will see him and tremble. You cannot reduce the coming of Christ to such a manner and begin to say, Mimi ndio yesu, yesu amefika. Atakuja tareflani. Where did you get this? This is what we call Human wisdom, an empty philosophy. Human wisdom, empty philosophy, the theorizing and trying to be creative. And the purpose, obviously, is that you may pull followers towards you. So we see here, it's not, you cannot say Christ is here. Don't, don't go for it. They will invite you, come, there's Christ here. The Bible is saying, don't go. Don't go. Don't go there. Because as he comes, it will, he will be visible as the star. You know, when a star shines, like now the star is shining out there. Can you see? Look outside and see the star shining. Is anything hidden from it? The sun is a star. The sun is a star. It's shining. How can you now say, how can you say it's hidden? We must remember that our Lord, how can a star not be visible? <clears throat> how can you say there he is? Oh, come, let's go over there. He has been seen. at Christ is in your heart. Amen? The heart. You must, we must wait for the return of Christ when he is coming. He is dwelling right now in your heart because he's your Lord. When you believe, the Holy Spirit comes in you. He dwells in you. You are a temple of God. You are the temple of God around your Christianity. You cannot go looking for God when he dwells in your heart. Amen? You are already a temple, so we must wait for his second coming and wait patiently. Subere, subere vizuri, usifadaike, usiangaisho na mambo mengi na andelea katika dunia hii kwa sasa. False teachers deny Christ. They deny Christ. The Bible tells us so. They deny Christ as Lord. They do not believe in him. They don't believe in him, just like we saw in those verses. Let's turn to 1 John. I want us to look at another verse here. 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4, verse 1 to 3. Dear friends, let me read for us 1 John 4, verse 1 to 3. Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see 
whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. This is how you can recognize the Spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard is coming, and even now is already in the world. The spirit of who? The anti? Antichrist. Wale ambao wanakata Yesu Christo. Wanamudhi haki. They do not take him for who he is. There are very many false prophets in the world. Abjaka. Give me also this ability. I want to do the things you are doing. I want to do the thing that God is doing through you. I want to do it also. Sasa kasema, sasa, si nikulipe pesa kidogo. Let me pay you a little money so that you give me the same power. It's something that people desire for. But for what purpose? So that when I also lay on people's hands, I want to have that power also. I want, I want to be 